For those of you who have been with the channel for a while, you'll remember that some time back on my Smart 2 power pack that you can see on the screen here, the 7 to 9 amp version, um, it went up the chute and it decided to inject 26 volts straight into the radio. And the first I knew about it when I got the old famous magic smoke coming out of the radio. And by then, it was too late. The radio had been fried. Now, I've stopped using the power pack since then and I've been using other ones. But at the end of the day, if the radios fail, they can put untold voltage in it and you will have no indication that they're doing that until you get that magic smoke. So here I ventured inside the power pack um, and I was looking to see what had happened to it because I, I had no idea. So I took the cover off and I was probing around backwards and forwards in there and I found a capacitor um, and I thought it was just a capacitor that had blown and you can see that one there. It, it, as I mentioned, it's toast and the bottom's all popped out. So I replaced that, turned it on, put the probes on, still 26 volts coming out of it. So after a bit more examination, I found out that the power transistor, normally fitted to the heatsink on the rear, this was a Toshiba 2N3055, had gone up the chute. Because that went up the chute, that's what put 26 volts in, but I had no way of knowing, when I turn any power pack on, what voltage is going in to the radio at the time. So I'm going to show you a quick mod that I've now done to this power supply, and it gives me a lot more confidence that I can use this more safely. And if this ever happens again, I actually have a fighting chance to save my radio because if you go back and look at some of the Royce update videos, it was a hell of a lot of work to get the Royce back after this happened and I'm failed, I'm never going back there again. So here I'm marking out the front of the power supply with the dimensions for the module. It needs to be 45 millimetres across by 26 millimetres high. You'll have to work out in inches. Now here I am drilling the holes um, just to get me started on the cutout because uh, obviously I've covered over the rear of all of the electronics and I've unbolted the power transformer and things in there and moved everything back so that when I poke the drill through the front of the radio it doesn't actually come into contact with the electronics. Now it's uh, drilled out, you can see we're getting sort of an opening coming onto there. I then start to get a little hand file that I have and I start filing it flat. I really needed a bigger file but I haven't got many files. So you can see me going round and round and round, just getting the opening nice and, you know, so you don't cut yourself, there's no burrs or anything laying on there. Uh, have a cup of tea because you're going to be here for some time. So the hole's all cut and then I'm going to put the module in. Now these modules, you don't know which way up they go. When they go in, they need to go in with the wires, the positive and the negative wires here at the bottom. Then when you put them in, they're the right orientation for the display. And then underneath the cut, I've got the positive and negative and I will just solder these wires onto there and then it will be on the switch and come on with the power supply, that's the thing. So let me get this pushed in and we'll see what it looks like. <laughs> what a great fit! If I hadn't covered up part of the right in there you wouldn't know that was factory. I'll put a little link up at the end about these modules, they're about, I, I bought three and because I bought three I got them for £2.90 each which is not too bad and that's delivered. So, anyway, next thing to do is, while I've got all the power pack out, I'm going to solder the wires onto here. So we've got the connection, then I've got to put all the board back in and the transformer and everything and bolt it all back together because everything's loose. And as I previously mentioned, you have the wires at the bottom so the display is the right way up. I've just soldered the red lead onto the red one here and the black one onto the black one. Okay, let's get this thing back together. Okay, so that's the power supply all back together. That's on. Right, the big reveal. Will it have worked? Perfect. So now, when I'm using and working on my power supply, I can see that it's not chucking out 26 volts. Because you saw the problems I had before when my power supply went up the chute. And that's a very easy mod. You can get these in green, blue, or whatever. Um, but for me, that is my new fail safe now, so hopefully I will never put 26 volts up any radio that I run off this power supply. It looks like it's flickering on the camera, but it isn't. It's completely stable. That's just how the camera looks like. I've just noticed that through the viewfinder. 
So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this little um, thing. If you know, if you don't want to hack all your power supplies bits to put that in, I suppose you could put a little box on the top here and just run the wires up from here and have it on there. But it's you know, it's up to you. I like to do a proper install. It's in there now, the hole's there, so if this unit ever packs up, I'll just pop it out, buy a new one, pop that one back in, done. So anyway, I'll put a link up now of the little units that you get, and uh, if you want to do it, do it. Any questions, feel free to comment below. Mm -hmm.